Again, security, about the most secure way to configure our wireless LAN, the 192-bit security mode. What is it? So Wi-Fi Lines describes it as a way to configure it that we have all cryptographic components at a consistent and extremely high security level of 192-bit. This security level is described by the German Federal Office of Information Security, the BSI, as a cryptographic strength against attacks. If an attacker needs two to the power of n operations to break it, we have n bit security level. And this has to be 192 for this mode, an incredibly large number. Is 192 bit a general recommendation? Certainly not. The, Germany, the German BSI um, recommends to have a security level of at least 120 bits, so much lower. For the European area, we have the eCrypt CSA recommendations that are quite similar. They align to about 128-bit security level. Of course, the IEEE and the Wi-Fi Alliance have never heard about these. They have definitions like the CNSA, and the version from 2018 had recommendations for algorithms and key sizes that all have a security level of at least 192-bit. This is what we are using in this mode. So what are these cryptographic components? And what security level do we have today? If we are using WPA2, WPA3, the most obvious cryptographic components is encryption, and we are using AES with 128-bit. Enough for general use, but not for this high security mode. There we are using AES with 256 bits. If you want to encrypt something, we need keys. They are generated with a key derivation function, and they are included as a hash algorithm. And the hash algorithm in use depends on the authentication key management suite. If we are using plain WPA2, this is typically AKM102, and the hash algorithm is SHA1. The general rule for SHA1 is don't use it. It's outdated, it's legacy. But if we are using WPA2 with AKM5 or 6, or we are using fast BSS transition, or we are using WPA3, the hash algorithm is SHA-256, which gives us a 128-bit security level. Not enough for 192-bit mode. There we are using AKM12, and the hash algorithm is SHA-384, highest level we have in this mode. Then we have authentication. For personal authentication, we can't really quantify a security level. But at least for WPA2 personal, our security level is somewhere between zero and not very much. In 192-bit mode, we are only using enterprise authentication with EAP TLS. And the security depends on the keys in our certificate. If we are still using RSA with 2048 bits, the German BSI assumes a security level of about 100 bit, so far too low. If we want to go to the 128 bit security level, we have recommendations, both BSI and eCrypt, to use either elliptic curves with 256 bits or RSA with 3072 bits. For 192 bit security level, CNSA sees the same key size in RSA at this higher security level. So the, the interpretation of the security of RSA is different here. But we could also use elliptic curves with 384 bit. And then we have a key exchange between our supplicant and the authentication server for the MSK. There we need our cipher suites and the embedded key exchange mechanism. This is what my older iPad suggests, and we have a lot of legacy ciphers that we don't want to use anymore, but we also have options for 128 and 192-bit. More important is the key exchange algorithm. Here with elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman ephemeral, and we have suggested options for 128-bit and also 192-bit security level. This is already an older release, so everything is there. What about the specification? 
The Wi-Fi lines has an actual specification in version 3.3, and they define that we should use AKM number 12 on our wireless LAN, and only AKM number 12. So there's no transition mode. Not that we want to use it, but no, it's not there. The standard 2020 defines it as authentication with .1x, and we have to use an EAP compliant, a CNSA compliant EAP method. The encryption will be done with GCMP256, or it could be CCMP256, but I wouldn't expect to see that GCMP is better. We have a couple of EAP ciphers that are allowed. And all these ciphers, or these three ciphers, are based on TLS version 1.2. This initial specification of WPA3 is from 2018. But the RFC for EAP TLS based on TLS 1.3 was only released on, published on 2022, so four years later. The top one in this list is the one that I see most often in all my .1x networks. So it's already quite common. What about the radio server? It would be certainly a good idea if the radio server knew that we are using 192-bit mode, for example, to restrict the allowed ciphers. We have a radius attribute for that. 188 sends the AKM suite to the radio server together with some other interesting information. What about quantum computers? We already had it yesterday. The problem that quantum computers will break our cryptography was already addressed in the CNSA version 2.0. And not all algorithms in our 192-bit mode are quantum computer resistant. For symmetric cryptography, everything stays the same. AES-256 is good, SHA-384 is good. But for asymmetric cryptography, everything changes. No more RSA, no more Diffie-Hellman, no more elliptic curve. We now have crystals. Fast roaming, there's no fast BSS transition. We might expect some slow roams. There is an AKM13 with similar security, but based on the WPA3 specification, it's not allowed to be enabled at the same time and on, the, on our BSSI, on our SSID. What about the end devices? We know it's always the end device that makes problems. All our mainstream operating systems, and these are the ones I am using on 192-bit mode, work, uh, are supported and work without problems if configured correctly. And that gets ugly. If we don't configure it correctly, Android just won't connect, and I think that's fine. But Apple devices and Windows might operate in a degraded security level, for example, only with 128-bit, although we have configured our controller access point for 192-bit. And this is really bad. Perhaps we don't realize it. So we have to make sure to configure it correctly. Um, with that, the last point, when should we start with the implementation of WPA3192? And my answer would be, now. Not with the SSID, but with the preparation to implement a new PKI that gives us 192-bit security level. For example, with elliptic curve three, uh, 384. That's it.